Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back for this week's My Choose Set video, where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention this week and give you my thoughts and my opinion. And obviously, one of them is that we finally got the Nintendo Direct that we were supposed to get last week, but after what happened in Japan from the, I think it was the 6.7 earthquake that hit there and so forth it obviously was delayed so we finally got this week's direct and outside of the announcement of civilization 6 which we obviously knew obviously we knew that was coming though we got some good announcements on that one but we also had some stories that caught some attention this week so why don't i give you give you a look why don't we take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention this week so we'll start off with the first one and that is the announcement of final fantasy is basically coming back to the nintendo switch Sort of, in a way, though. Um, as some of you probably know, last week, uh, Square Enix released Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition, which obviously not every... Which, obviously, the response, based on what I've seen so far, has been kind of mixed on this one, as some people were glad that Final Fantasy XV was coming to the Nintendo Switch. Others felt like they would have... Others, like me, kind of felt like it would have liked to see... The console version come to the Nintendo Switch. Whether they could still pull that off or not remains to be seen. Although there's been some discussion that they might, that Final Fantasy 15 might use Unreal Engine 4 if they bring it to the Switch, but we'll have to wait and see about that one though. But apparently that may not be the only Final Fantasy 15, only Final Fantasy game coming to the Nintendo Switch. As it turns out, this as it turns out this week, it was announced that a remake of the supposedly the GameCube game. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is not only coming to the Nintendo Switch, but also the PS4 as well. In um, several articles, um, this one from uh, Nintendo Life, it reads, quote, Square Enix has revealed that Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remaster Edition, a remake of the classic GameCube title, is heading to Nintendo Switch. Um, supposedly they have a release date as to 2019. It's also worth pointing out it's coming to the PS4 as well. I mentioned that as well. Um, released back in 2004, Crystal Chronicles tasks players with traveling the world in search of of Mira, M-Y-R-R-H, um, apologize if I'm not saying that name correctly, which is used to fuel Crystal protecting the world settlement from the poisonous um, Masam, M-I-A-S-M-A, Starting in their home village, the protagonist goes on a journey to find rare trees which produce this fuel, exploring dungeons along the way. Information on the remaster is rather sparse at this moment, aside from the fact that it will be more beautiful than ever, although we do know the game is set to launch um, in 2019. Um, we, and it's also been reported that the game will also have sort of an online feature i think that's for the i think they announced that for the ps4 no word for about the switch version yet although i assume it probably would be coming to that feature will be coming to nintendo switch as well um honestly though um i never really got to try much of crystal chronicles out though um it was an interesting game that came out back in the days where the whole idea of multiplayer was, you know, the whole GameCube, um, Game Boy Advance connectivity, though, which was a novel idea, but it never really, obviously never really took off. There were only a few games that took advantage of this feature. One I know was Crystal Chronicles, but the other one was the first Splinter Cell game that was brought over to the GameCube, which had this, had you use your game how to use your Game Boy Advance as a map. It's sort of like, it was like before the Nintendo DS came out to be exact though. Um, I'm very curious how this is going to work since this was originally, I believe this was originally designed as a multiplayer game. Although I think there might've been some single player components. Um, I'm hoping though that with this remaster edition, we'll get maybe a single player mode or an offline mode to play the game as well. So. Hopefully that will. Hopefully they add that feature as well. Um, it's not only is this game come. Not only is this Final Fantasy game coming, but apparently we're also getting more Final Fantasy games though. Um, again from, and from um, Nintendo Life, it was 
it was this was also revealed at the Nintendo Direct. Um, it says, "quote During today's game, during the Nintendo Direct broadcast, it was confirmed that um, Final Fantasy VII is coming to the Nintendo Switch along with Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy X2, and Final Fantasy XII: The Zodiac Age." Um, apparently, these these will all be HD remastered. Um, they also announced uh, Final Fantasy Pocket Edition HD and World of Final Fantasy Maxa um, and Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, Mystery Dungeon Everybody. Um, so apparently, we're getting a lot of Final Fantasy games coming to the Nintendo Switch. Final Fantasy VII coming there is very interesting because that many hold that with very high regards as I think one of their favorite RPGs or one of their favorite entries including one scene in particular where one of the characters although I it is a, a spoiler although by this time let's see 97 98 99 although I think by this time it's been like what maybe like decades so by this point I think everyone figured it out though um, the, one of the scenes I think where Air, Athena, or I apologize if I'm not saying her name correctly, you know, dies in one of the games was one of the most, sh I think, shocking scenes for some people to be exact. But nevertheless, that game still held with high regards. There was a remake of the game, but right now that whole, whole situation has now fallen into like development hell and who knows when that game will see the light of day. Um, it's possible we could see it come to the PS5, but... At this point, I don't know what's, what they're doing, what Square Enix is doing with that one, though. Um, interesting thing about Final Fantasy VII, um, a port of this coming over to the Nintendo Switch, was that it was released on the PS4, and apparently they added, I think, some features to it, such as, I think, the ability to walk around the world map without doing random battles. I think this could be turned on and off. And supposedly, and, and again, I could be wrong on this, a feature where basically um, after every battle your your party's health regenerates and all that stuff so um, basically it's sort of features to try to get you know people who may not be good at RPGs to you know give this game a go and I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing provided that basically it Friday this is a feature that could be turned on or off however that being said, with all this great news, all this good news of a lot of Final Fantasy games coming to the Nintendo Switch, there is, however, bad news. And this one is regarding Crystal Chronicles uh, for now, though. And that is, and this was picked up today, again, by um, Nintendo Life. Um, apparently, though, if, you, if for North America Switch owners, apparently, according to this, though, um, it, they're pointing out that the Crystal Chronicle remaster for the Switch will be digital only in North America. Um, um, apparently, according to what they're saying, is that today we got some rather disappointing news for North American players. The reheated version of the GameCube Classic won't be getting a physical release in that region. Go Nintendo reached out to Square Enix representative and was told that the game will only be available in the eShop. Um, in the US. While we don't have a solid confirmation yet, it is likely the same story in Europe too. So if that's true, that's kind of a disappointment for those. And it kind of raises question of could the other Final Fantasy games that they announced, could we see that as well being eShop only as well? And if it turns out to be that Japan gets a physical version, if that happens, um, don't... Uh, for me, though, I personally will be looking at Play Asia and basically maybe importing that sucker as well. So don't be surprised if some people are basically, <clears throat> excuse me, decide to go to Play Asia to import this if they don't want to go through, you know, the eShop hassle as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, after all, I did it with Okami as well. Yes, it was released on the eShop, but I decided to bite the bullet and buy the, buy the Japanese version. So overall, great that Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is coming to the Nintendo Switch, that they're really releasing that. Great that basically we're getting, you know, Final Fantasy 7, 9, X, X2, and 12, the Zodiac Age are coming to the Nintendo Switch. That's great. 
It is a little disappointing, however, that Crystal Chronicles will only be a digital-only release in the U.S. Um, no word yet about Europe, but I wouldn't be surprised if Europe is it's digital-only. And it kind of does raise the question of if those other Final Fantasy games are going to be digital only as well, or we, will, or if there's going to be a physical version coming to the system. So, overall, like I said, great that we're getting all these games, but disappointed that Crystal Chronicle is eShop only as far as the US goes. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part two, which is about Spider-Man, and apparently Spider-Man seems to be getting off to a great start as far as sales-wise in, I believe, both Europe and, or I think in UK, and in Japan. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My True Scent video for this week. And for this week, we're going to be taking a look at the sales numbers that have come out so far for the Spider-Man game that was that was released. I, I, I think it was released this week, I think, or last week. I'm not 100% sure. That was released on the PS4. And while we don't have the official um, US numbers at this time, since, and since we'll probably won't know until October when... NPD releases their figures on the top best-selling games for September. I think we have a good idea where the game is right now in terms of sales-wise. And I honestly, based on what we I've read so far, <clears throat> it's off to it's pretty much off to a very good start. Um, first off, and according to GameStop, they've reported on the game in terms of how well it's doing in the UK. And according to them, they're pointing out that Marvel Spider-Man game is currently number one so far on um, at in the UK. So it's take according to them, they're saying, "quote Marvel Spider-Man developed by Exomniac Games takes the number one spot in the UK sh ch sales charts for the week end September 8th. According to sales monitor, monitor chart track." The PS4 exclusive is the biggest debut on an individual format since the PS4 version of Call of Duty World War II. Spider-Man also has become the fastest selling title starting the Web Slinger and the fastest selling Marvel title beating Lego Marvel Super Hero by a big margin. So obviously the game is doing very well in the UK. Um, currently at number 2 I think it's the new Dragon Quest game. Uh, number 3 we have Grand Theft Auto V. Number four is F1 2018. Number five, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Um, obviously, that could be all the versions that have come out, including you know, not only the PS4 in 2017, but of course the Xbox One, Switch, and of course the PC version. Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 is at number six. Uh, Mario Kart 8, um, the only Nintendo game, right? Only Nintendo game so far on this list is at number seven. Number eight, Des Destiny for Two Forsaken. Number nine, um, Players Unknown Battleground, and at number ten so far is Legos The Incredible. Meanwhile, at, over in Japan, or at least according to uh, PlayStation Li Life, a uh, PlayStation um, Lifestyle, if I'm saying the name correctly, yeah, PlayStation Lifestyle, they're they're reporting saying, "quote It turns out that Marvel Spider-Man is currently." A salt after slice of video game goodness. It was the most wanted game in the, in the United Kingdom, outselling God of War after its launch. PS4 owners in Japan also knee on it, judging from the latest sales data from the region. What more? What's more impressive? Um, it, it, what's more impressive and feedback from both the critics and the public are largely positive, though. Um, it's interesting to note that um, spite that Marvel Spider-Man sold over. 125,000 co copies in Constress. Um, PES 2019, I believe that's Pro Evolution Soccer, was last week's top seller when it moved 73,000 copies, though. Um, so according to the list, though, um, at least in the top 10, at least in the top 10 so far, um, um, obviously Marvel Spider-Man is currently sitting at number one with in Japan, with Pro, Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 at number two, 
Zone of Endors, the second runner, is at number three. I mean, second runner, Mars. Uh, that is a remake of Zone of Endors 2, though. Um, number four, the Switch version of Minecraft is certainly doing well. Um, Splatoon 2 is at number five. Um, number six, um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is certainly doing well. Number seven, um, SNK Hero Heroines Tag Team Battle um, debuted with um, 10,018 copies sold so far. This is based off the, um, P they're basically saying the PS4 version. While the Switch version debuted um, at number thir at number 13 with 5,493. Uh, number eight, Conan Exile. Uh, number nine, Taco. No 2G drum and fun. That's that, I think that Bandai Namco game with that drum thing. And at number 10, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild still hanging on there so far. So, so over, so currently it's still going there and rounding out the top 20 though. Um, certainly a lot of Nintendo titles, a lot of Nintendo titles holding out the rest though. But back to the Spider Man one. Overall, I have to say so far, it looks like the game is off to a really, really good start. Um, with the UK seems to be doing very well, and Japan, and especially in Japan, doing very well since they track their their sales charts weekly. Though it will be interesting to see where those games place come the second week. And so far, will there be, will it hope still be at the top? Will it or will it drop? And if it does drop from on the list, how far of a drop are we talking about? Are we talking about a massive drop, like at the bottom, or or like a drop as like it's completely fallen off the charts, or not really not that big of a drop at all? Maybe like going from number one to number two. So we'll have to wait and see, though. As far as the U.S. goes, though, although we'll have to wait until NPD releases their their results on the top best-selling games in the U.S., though. If I had to take a guess, and while I could be completely wrong on this, I'm leaning towards that I would not be surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, if Spider-Man PS4 becomes the number one best-selling game for September. For September. I would not be surprised if that happens. I think it would be more shocking to see if it doesn't make it either into the top 10 or top 20 or doesn't make it into the list at, at all. But I, given the amount of reception this game has gotten so far, I'm doubtful that's going to happen. So for me, I'm leaning towards the possibility, I'm leaning towards the fact that it will probably be number one on the NPD charts. But again, I could be wrong on that. But overall, I will say great that Spider-Man is doing very well in both the UK and in Japan. Hope I've been playing the game as well. It is certainly fun despite having couple of, of flaws here and there but nothing that, that ruins my experience with the game so great so great that's doing well in Japan and doing well in the UK now we just have to wait and see how it does here in the US <clears throat> okay uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back we're gonna get to part three and this one is going to be dealing with um, about Nintendo's online service, include, especially the cloud saves, which unfortunately has gotten some Nintendo fans and some people a bit upset over some of the decision Nintendo has made regarding their cloud saves. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Nintendo's cloud saves and some of the comments that they have made that, well, let's just say not everybody, including a lot of, including several Nintendo fans seem to be happy with. As you all know, Nintendo is going to be launching their online servers, online service pretty soon as well. It was originally supposed to come out last year, but got delayed for, I mean, I think there were certain issues they had addressed, to the, or some people claim that they were so focused on the Switch, um, trying to keep up with the supply and demand, that they had to put this on the back burner for now. Well, some information that came out recently about the whole cloud save about feature that will be part of Nintendo's online server, and well, 
it has not really gotten sat well with a lot of people. The first one obviously that came out was the fact that in order to activate the cloud, use the cloud save feature, you have to be part of Nintendo's online service. Well, some more features, more things that come out that really has not sat well with a lot of people. So we'll start off with the first one, and this has to do from an article from Game Informer, which basically reported off that said, quote, it seems likely that Nintendo was planning to details their paid online online plan scheduled to go live this month during their now delayed Nintendo Direct. Much like the accidental misfire with Yoshi's Crafting World, some things have gone live on the website ahead of the announcement, including some small details on cloud saving. While Nintendo has previously said that not all games will support it, we now know a few Switch games do not have cloud save. On the page for Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, a message um, at the bottom indicates that cloud saves are a no-go for the two Nintendo published games. The warning reads, Nintendo Switch Online membership sold separately and Nintendo account required for online play. This game does not support save cloud data, save data cloud backup. Not available in all countries, internet access required for online feature. This warning is also on the page for Splatoon 2. We've also discovered that warnings on Dark Souls Remaster, Dead Cells, FIFA 19 and NBA 2K19. It is worth noting that all these games support Cloud Save um, on PlayStation Network and Xbox Live. Um, while Pokemon Let's Go can be explained away as the Pokemon Company often be often overbearing, paranoid, and a desire to drive business to the cloud-based Pokemon banks to trip and surface, the others include examples do not make much sense. After that article was printed, after that article came out, Nintendo responded, I think they responded to this, and they said, and I quote, this was updated around 8.54 p.m. Central Time on September 7th. Um, it basically, they said that Nintendo's response to our request for comments stating that the lack of cloud safe is because of item duplication possibility. And according to Nintendo, they said, and I quote, the vast majority of Nintendo Switch games will support save cloud data backup. However, in certain games, this feature will make it impossible to, for example, regain items that have been traded to other players or revert to a higher online multiplayer ranking that has been lost. To ensure fair play, save cloud data backup may not be enabled for such games to ensure that save data cloud backup cannot be used to unfairly affect online multiplayer ranking the feature will not be enabled in splatoon 2. on top of that we now know that basically you will not be able if for some reason you decide not to use nintendo's online service you and you just, or you let your let it expire you could say bye bye to your cloud saves According to a question that appeared on an FAQ about this, the question asks, after my Nintendo Switch Online subscription expires, will my save data cloud f files and Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online save data be erased? Um, and according to the, the answer they gave, and this is from an article from Nintendo Life, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, Save data stored with Save Data Cloud cannot be kept outside of the duration of your Nintendo Switch Online membership. Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online also uses the Save Data Cloud, so the same applies. However, if you keep the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Nintendo Online Save Data saves locally to your locally on your Nintendo Switch console. Then you can use it again if you purchase another membership. According to them, it says, that statement, and this is what the article is saying, uh, the Nintendo Life article is saying, this statement suggests that it sh should your subscription expire, your cloud save will be deleted with no way of getting them back. Nintendo suggests, Nintendo's suggestion here is to save your data locally as this can be transferred back to the cloud when you renew 
but this naturally defeats the whole purpose of the feature and only seems to apply to the NES portion of the service. And just to make sure, just to let you know how much people hate it though, according to the YouTube video that they showed off of the overview trailer of the Nintendo Online Service, currently as of this recording right now, it currently sits with 4.4K likes and 8.8K dislike. It'll be interesting to see if it ends up being the most disliked video out there. With interesting comments saying, quote, we we were waiting one and a half year after launch for the Switch for this. Um, it points out, okay, it points out, the only game I played online is Splatoon 2 and with this new magnificent plan, plan, the game is practically useless because I refuse to pay for this service. What a waste of $65. Huge thanks to Nintendo. Um, other comment says, those dislikes should be a clear indication that this is a bad idea. Um, and it's, other says, Nintendo, why are you charging me for online without dedicated servers at least? Why only NES games? Where's the virtual console? Why is this Splatoon a multiplayer game backed up to cloud save? You could have done its server side and why are you changing, charging people $60 for two controllers that can't play anything other than NES and allowing people who have service access to buy them? Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, oh yeah, this one. Could you, and one last one I'll read. I'm sure you can all read. You can all pretty much read the comments. The last one I'll read is, Congratulations, Nintendo. Five days until your service launch, and you told us nothing that we didn't already know. Is it going to be a good, stable service? Why should we use your voice chat when Discord exists? Yeah, they, they're really pushing the voice chat on that one. Um, what's with the special offer? What else does the service have to offer? And he sarcastically says, Who cares? It's got NES games. You know... Based on everything that has come out so far about it, I feel like this is a train wreck just waiting to happen, though. And it, it, in a way, it kind of blows my mind that a company like Nintendo can embrace crossplay, something that Sony isn't willing to embrace at this time, which still blows my mind on that one, though, as well. But you're. I don't believe it. You're telling me that certain game that some games cannot will not be able to use the cloud because of according to Game Informer, uh, basically says that because of regain regain items that have been traded to other players. I mean, this is almost as blatantly outrageous as their comment when the original Splatoon came out when they talked about how they didn't want to put voice chat in because children might learn might learn inappropriate words never mind the fact that at some point a child is going to pick up an inappropriate word if it's not going to be from online it's going to be if if he or she steps outside and someone says an inappropriate word to be exact I mean <laughs> I really don't know what they're thinking if this is going to actually work or anything like that, though. I mean, I like the idea of the NES. I like the idea of the cloud backup, but it just feels like I just think question some of their decisions on this. And I do. I mean, it's especially with the voice chat app. I mean, really, you're still pushing that after the amount of backlash that got and the amount of people who are just basically saying that this thing looks its stupid and idiotic though um it does sometimes give the impression that nintendo as much as i like them and i do like the switch and i do like their games it makes me kind of wonder are they out of touch with reality in some ways i mean i understand they want to do their own thing and there's nothing wrong with that but you got to keep in mind that you also have to realize what your competitors doing and looking at what are they doing right, but what are they also doing wrong and what can you do better than what they're doing. And I just think that it gives the impression that they're still in their little bubble that what Sony and Microsoft is doing is not has no impact on them. Well, unfortunately, that's not true. We saw what happened with the Wii U, to be exact, so I'm not buying that argument. So, 
overall, the whole cloud save and, and the whole online service that they're offering is a mess. The question now comes down to, based on the negative response it has gotten so far, is how bad of a negative response is this going to have to the thing? Will this, despite the negativity, still be a success? Or will it end up being a major flop? And could the whole issue with Nintendo's cloud save, could that end up being the thing that really turns people off from buying this? And could this have an impact to, say, other games that maybe Nintendo puts out a multiplayer game and that game doesn't do sell well because people um, are not going to buy it if they don't think that their game's going to be saved in the cloud, let alone if they don't have a have basically the Nintendo you know, online service membership. So bottom line, I fear, I fear this is a train wreck just waiting to happen very easily. I'm not, I think this sounds dumb and everything like that. And I'm not sure about the whole online with the NES games. I mean, there are some NES games, Super Mario Bros. 3, I consider the most favorite, my favorite video game of all time. I just, I'm not sure about this. I'm really, really not sure about this at all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to part four. And this one has to do with EA causing controversy, which is nothing new right there. But this time, basically having issues with the Belgian government. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at EA. Everyone loves to hate EA these days. And apparently EA is no stranger to figure out ways to, well, piss people off in certain ways. So I'm sure all of you are aware right now that Belgium recently enacted... I think it basically declared loot, box, loot boxes as considered a form of gambling as made it illegal for, I think, games to be sold in Belgium that contain loot boxes. And some of the companies like, I think, Activision Blizzard had to change some of that in Overwatch, while 2K, even though last week I talked about how they asked people to asked the Belgian government to allow loot boxes in their games, although I don't know how many people did that, though, so, um, complied as well. But EA seems to be, um, and say whether you agree with me on this or not, seems to be pulling a Donald Trump and doubling down on the loot box situation, though. Um, in an article reported on, on Eurogamer, um, it is reported that Headlining, EA reported reportedly under criminal investigation in Belgium due to FIFA's loot boxes and failure to comply with con with country's gambling laws. Um, according to the article, it says the Belgian the Belgian government, which declared loot boxes to be a form of gambling earlier this year, has reportedly launched a criminal investigation into EA after the publisher refused to modify. FIFA's randomized cards pack loot boxes in order to comply with country's um, gambling laws. Back in April, Belgium's gaming commission determined that loot boxes found in FIFA 18, Overwatch, and Counter-Strike Global Offenses were an illegal game of chance and thus subject to Belgium's game gambling laws. Fa failure to adhere to these laws, which, in which includes ensuring that minors are unable to access gambling ele elements with within a game is illegal. Following the ruling, Blizzard, Foul, and 2K, 2K games all eradicated to dis all E-L-E-C-T-E-D, pardon me if I'm not saying the name correctly, to disable loot boxes in their games in Belgium. EA, however, has done nothing and as a result, according to a according to a Belgium publication, Metro VI Google Translation, is now subject of a criminal investigation by the Brussels Public Pro Prosecutor Office. If it decides to prosecute, um, the case will go to court. Um, the Belgian government gaming commission has considered loot boxes to be a game of chance because players don't know exactly which items a box may contain when purchasing it. EA, however, says otherwise. 
starting in April that its games were developed and implemented ethically and lawfully around the world and does not agree that its games could be considered any form of gambling. This said e EA CEO Andrew Wilson in May is because players always receive a specific number of items in each pack because it doesn't pro provide or authorize any or if I'm saying name correctly, any way to cash out or sell items or virtual currencies for real money. It is so also a report, it's worth pointing out, this is the same EA that decided to get too greedy with Star Wars Battlefront 2, and it's because of their greediness that put the whole loot box situation into where it is right now. I don't know how this is going to play out, to be exact. I'm not, I don't know what will happen if the what what happens if, if the pros, Belgian prosecutor takes this to court? And I don't know if they're going to be if they're going to are they going to ask for them to extradite Andrew Wilson to Belgium for basically because they broke the law or something like that. So this is very very interesting and it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. Will the prosecutor pursue? criminal charges against EA could we see them take this taken to court and if so how will the courts rule will they rule in favor of the Belgian prosecutors or will they rule in favor of EA forcing may possibly the Belgium government to probably maybe rewrite the laws or anything like that but either way regardless of whether or not members of who work at EA get prosecuted or not this is another like another black eye into EA to be exact and at this point it sounds like they don't care they they, just, they don't they don't really care it's like at this point you know what we're pissing off everybody though we might as well just do what we do I mean their E3 showing was just like you know what we don't give a flying F to begin with so we'll just basically just do whatever we want to to do I mean and it, the fact that they're doubling down on this it's like you wonder why you guys were ranked twice two years in a row the most hated company in america though and and give that considering what we're seeing with battlefield 5 over their response to people upset about you know a british woman with a prostrated arm or a british soldier with a katana or one with a with a, with a cricket bat and all that stuff and the response of if you don't like what you see, don't buy the game, which obviously got the pre-order sales down, which is one of the reasons why they had to delay the game to November. Not to mention, the beta has gotten heavily criticized and not everybody is a big fan of it. Not to mention certain words being banned. It's like, it's basically like they didn't learn anything at all from any controversy whatsoever. Um, they are basically, and I just... It just blows my mind the incompetence this is and it's one of the many reasons why i'm not purchasing an ea game going forward though i pretty much stopped purchasing any game from them to be exact it's one of the reasons why i'm basically focusing on you know a lot of the games like i'm willing to put money into buying a game from bethesda than ea bethesda may not be perfect but at least they put out a quality product not to mention they put out single player games rather than EA which and their so called live services since they're focused heavily on that to be exact. But it just blows my mind the arrogance from them and the fact that they are pretty much and say what you will, whether you love like agree with what I said or not, are basically pulling a Donald Trump. They are dumbing down and don't care the fact that they are creating a controversy going on with this. It's just amazing. It's just utterly amazing, though. And honestly, if Battlefield 5 bombs because of what EA has done or, and all that, I would not be shocked whatsoever. And as for FIFA, honestly, part of me wishes the Belgium, if this goes to cart, court though part of me wishes the belgium government to win and really stick it to ea to be exact but we'll have to wait and see if it does go to court and how they rule on it to be exact but overall it, it just feels like ea is basically like you know what screw it no one likes us then whatever we're just going to do what we're going to double down and do whatever the hell we want to do i mean it, it just it's unbelievable to be exact i, I am like completely 
at this point, it shouldn't be a surprise of EA pulling this off. And it looks like, and basically, it looks like they did not learn anything with the Star Wars Battlefront 2 debacle of a mess. A mess that they created, to be exact. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to um, part Two, we'll get to, oh no, not that part two, I mean part five, and this is my thoughts on the Nintendo Direct that I um, saw, I saw last night. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fifth, my, fifth part of our My Two Cent video for this week, and for this one, we're going to be looking at the September 13th Nintendo Direct that came out, which was supposed to be the Direct from last week, but I'm sure we, I said before in the opening, obviously because of what happened in Japan with the monsoon and the earthquake, though, they had to delay it, though. And for this one, and there were some pretty good announcements, though. I mean, nothing huge, but there were some good announcements. Other than the one that I mentioned earlier at part one about Final Fantasy with the big announcement that all the Final Fantasy games are coming to, or Final Fantasy 7, 9, X, X2, and 12, the Zodiac Age are coming to the Nintendo Switch. There were some good announcements as well. So a breakdown of it, at least according from, um, the, from the site Nintendo Direct, um, some of the games that they announced, well, we'll start off with the first one, which is the 3DS, which, I'm glad that they started it off with the 3DS one. At the very least, we finally got, they started that one off before we get to the main course, which was the Switch. And some of the, the three of them that they announced at least at during the Direct were Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn though. Um, that was a fun game when that came out, I believe, believe actually came out on the Wii back in 2010 though. It was made by, I think, good feel on um, the same one that made the awesome Wario Land shake it. Why aren't we not seeing another Wario Land game? Nintendo, really, why are we not seeing that one? So definitely looking forward to seeing that one coming to the 3DS along with a remake of Mario and Luigi's Bowser Inside Story with the extra content of Bowser Jr.'s Journey. I'm surprised they haven't remade Mario and Luigi uh, Partners in Time or something like that. That that would have been great if they were to remake that one, though. So we're getting a remake of Bow Mario and Luigi's Bowser Inside Story. Luigi Mansion. Um, it, the first one's coming to the Nintendo 3DS. We learned that you can basically play the game in two-player mode. Well, basically, they're saying two, two players who, who each own the game can team up to explore and capture the ghost of Luigi's. Mansion. It also has amiibo support as well, um, such as tapping one of the four compatible amiibos will reveal where it, boos are hiding and heal Luigi when he talks to Toad, among other bonuses. So, while I still would have preferred the original Luigi's Mansion to come to the Nintendo Switch, it's nice as gain a second chance considering it's considered a cult hit among Nintendo fans, especially as one of the early GameCube games. Speaking of Luigi Mansion coming to the Switch, I it, they they announced that Luigi Mansion three is in the is in the works, which is certainly certainly is nice. That one has been rumored for quite some time. Along with they also announced that Animal Crossing coming to the Nintendo Switch. I wasn't a big Animal Crossing fan, but I'm glad it's glad that. It sounds like they're getting, we're getting a traditional Animal Crossing, unlike the one on the Wii U that everyone did not like because of the whole, I was like, basically you can only play the game using Amiibos, and for what I understand, that game uh, sold very poorly, though. Um, we also learned that one of the characters from um, uh, from the Animal Crossing, Isabella, will be in the, in the upcoming Super Smash Bros. Um, Ultimate, though. Um, other than we also learned about Nintendo's online service, which I talked about in the in the video as well. We also learned that we're getting Nintendo Entertainment System controllers, which can be charged, which like the Joy-Cons, you can put them in and charge them up like you would when you hook up your Joy-Cons to your Switch, though. Although it looks like right now it can only be used for the, uh, you know, the NES games to be exact. 
Um, we also know that we now know that the ten the rumors about Nintendo re-releasing New Super Mario Brothers U. Um, we now it's going to be called New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Um, basically, they're saying up to four players can enjoy this revamped version of the classic Wii U game when it comes to Nintendo Switch on January 11th. Mario, Luigi, and Toad return as playable characters and are joined by Nibbit and Toadalee, who can also turn into Peachalee by getting the Super Crown, offering new ways for beginners to play together with friends and family. New Super Luigi U, the first platform with Luigi in a star starring role, will also be included in New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe um, at no extra cost. Between both games, there are a whopping 164 courses to play. So in other words, it looks like it's basically the original New Super Mario Bros. U and the New Super Mario New Super Luigi U. So basically, there's doesn't sound it doesn't sound like that's going to be some any new courses though. And as I said earlier, when this rumor came, when I said um, when they when this rumor came out though, I was kind of mixed on this. I mean, on one hand, I could understand them wanting to re-release this game, considering a lot of Wii U games have been re-released, mostly because a lot of people missed out on it and the Wii U wasn't exactly popular compared to the way the Switch is. At the same time, I feel as though it would have been better if they just did like a whole new New Super Mario Brothers game for the Nintendo Switch. No, maybe New Super Mario Brothers Switch. It would have been nice if they had done that instead. I don't hate New Super Mario Brothers U. I enjoyed that game. That was a fun 2D Mario game to be exact, especially some of the later levels where the difficulty kind of basically kicked up it was t kicked up as well but at the same time i feel as though it would have been better if they just created a whole new new super mario brothers game for the nintendo switch but but basically they're bringing this out this will be out on january 11th um yoshi's craft world which looks very impressive to me i did like yoshi's woolly world um yoshi games um, may, I still think Super Mario World 2 Yoshi Island is still the best one of them all, but I definitely want to give this one a try, especially learning the fact that I believe this one is going to be running on Unreal Engine 4 to be exact. Um, they're aiming for Spring 2019 for this one, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on that one though. We also learned about, of course, that Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate set, which was rumored, but now we know it's true. According to an article, it's saying this upcoming Nintendo Switch bundle features a Nintendo Switch system complete with a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate branded Joy-Con controller and dock and a download code for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game at a suggested retail price of $359.99, $360 to be exact. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate set launches on November 6th. Uh, November 2nd. The download code for the game um, won't be active until the game launches in December 7th. So it means that you're going to have a... So if I'm reading that correctly, you're going to have a code for a game, for a system, with the game that you cannot activate until December 7th. For something that's going to be launching on November 2nd. Let that sink in for just a second, all right? Of course, we talked about um, Final Fantasy, the whole bunch of Final Fantasy game. The other one, this one they're talking about, Town, this one's kind of interesting because this one is being made by Game Freak that are known for developing, uh, only know, at this point are known for the Pokemon series. So it's kind of interesting that they're working on a brand new title so that's not a Pokemon game. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I'm not saying they shouldn't ban Pokemon or anything like that. But it is nice and encouraging to see them working on something new for that. Um, right now it's a working title. It says that Game Freak, the developers of the Pokemon series, have created a new RPG for the Nintendo Switch. In town, players must take up arms against invading monsters all within the walls of a single village. Uh, town launches for Nintendo Switch in uh, 2019. That one I might try out. That I might, want, might try that one out as well. I'm guessing we'll probably hear something at E3 to be exact. Unless it's almost done and we hear something like being out, out maybe in April or May. My guess is we'll hear more about it at at E3 2019. I could be wrong, but 
we'll have to wait and see. Super Mario Party is coming out. Um, I'm not really much, I never really was a big fan of the series, but um, I might try it out, especially in learning that there's a single player challenge road. Um, and now they've added sort of online play, sort of. They're saying that it's the mini game gauntlet online ma marathon and all that. Um, the game is will be available on October 5th. Um, we know we have Pokemon Go, let Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee with the Pokemon Ball Plus, which I'm I'll just stick with just using the Joy Cons about that one. Um, we've learned we have also learned that Bandai Namco is bringing that Kameo um, Damasi K A T A M A R I D A M A C Y reroll. Um, I've heard about this one though. I think this was released back in the PS2. It sort of became sort of a cult hit as well. Um, this one I might try out though. Um, it basically they're saying that it will launch on November 30th um, on the Nintendo eShop. And the good news for that one is that they're saying that a physical package version will come in winter 2018. My guess, my guess is December. Um, the the, they showed off more of the da Daemon X Mach Machina. Um, that that one I've been keeping an eye out for quite some time, though. Um, it basically it basically says, as a mercenary, players will apply a powerful suit called an arsenal and face runaway AI, defeat enemies and acquire parts that can be equipped on the fly or brought back to base to craft new argu ar arguments, use additional tactics by changing between project projectiles and melee attacks or take the fight on foot to gain an advantage in battle. Um, it launches on the Nintendo Switch in 2019. Um, depending on how far it is, we'll, find, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they'll show more D3 or it might be out, say, uh, maybe, you know, again, March or April or May, or it could be a fall 2019 release. So we'll have to wait and see in that one. But that one I'm looking up for. Capcom's also releasing their beat 'em up bundle, which contains the which contains the games of Final Fight, Captain Commando, Knights of the Rounders, coming to Nintendo Switch with up to four player local or online play. Uh, it also says this game also this this also includes games that never launched on a home home console before, like Armor Warriors and Battle Circus. The digital version of this bundle launches on the Nintendo Nintendo eShop on the Nintendo Switch this winter. I'm a big fan of beat em up games, so this is definitely one I'm looking forward to, especially when they announce a actual sequel to Streets of Rage. If Capcom's bringing Final Fight to the, bringing it over to Nintendo Switch, for the love of God, please let it be the arcade version, not the Super Nintendo version. Not that I hate the Super Nintendo version, but of course with the Super Nintendo, it's considered the weakest version considering that they took out one level. And they changed some of the characters. Well, I'm sure we all heard about the whole thing with Poison and all that stuff. So, uh, please, for the love of God, let it be the arcade version, to be exact. Not the Super Nintendo version. Um, City Skyline is also out. Obviously, this is the closest thing we're going to get to um, Sin City. Since considering EA butchered Sin City thanks to the whole debacle in 2013. Um, we already know about... Civilization coming. Um, we know about Mega Man 11, um, the demo that I tried out, which I'll get to that one in a minute. We also now know about the Amiibos, that basically you can um, players will unlock helpful in-game items for use for in the full game by tax by tapping the existing Mega Man Amiibo or the new Mega Man Amiibo figure. Um, supposedly that will launch when the game comes out on October 2nd. From what I heard about that, I think that one is only going to be like, you can only tap it once a day or something like that. It's very similar, could be similar to how Fire Emblem Warriors and Hyrule Warriors is handled. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, excuse me a second. We also got updates for Splatoon 2, um, up to update number 4, Mario Tennis to updated to 2.0 um diablo 3 eternal collection which will launch on november 2nd that's the one i'm looking forward to trying out though um especially hearing the fact that 
I believe it's going to be able to run at 60 frames per second, regardless if it's docked or undocked. So I want to see that myself. Um, Starlink Battle for Atlantis. Um, I'm still on the fence about that one. I'm not 100% for sure, especially considering that the whole outside of the Amiibos, the whole Toy for Life thing kind of faded out to be exact. And while it's great to see Star Fox in it, it, it would have been nice if Nintendo actually does a true Star Fox game. Though, of course, uh, after what happened with Star Fox Zero, we'll have, we'll have to wait and see with how this one plays out. Maybe this one will be successful as Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle was, which from what I've heard, that one sold, I think, about, about 2 million copies so far. Um, they also talked about, of course, um, the World End with, Ends With You Final Remix, which is coming out October 12th. Um, which, from what I understand, that one's not going to use the Pro Controller, so that's kind of interesting on that one. Um, the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Tora, the Gold Country, the Golden Country, um, is available for pre-purchase on, uh, basically right now on the Nintendo eShop. They're saying that, um, it will come to the Nintendo Switch on September 21st in-store in Nintendo eShop and Nintendo eShop. Or on September 14th for owners of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 expansion pack. Uh, Warframes it will be out on November 20th. Um, um, NBA 2K19 is available. Um, NBA 2K uh, Playground 2 will be available this fall. They don't have a date on that one yet. Um, Just Dance 2019 will be available on October 23rd. Um, FIFA 19. Um, will be available on September 28th. Uh, Team Sonic Racing will be available this winter. And a LEGO DC Super Villains will be out on October 16th. Overall, um, it was not a bad one. Uh, bad um, Nintendo Direct. There were some good announcements. The fact that Luigi Mansion 3 is happening, that is great. I'm glad that they're bringing that over. Even the, and even though I wish that they brought the original one to the Switch and maybe the Dark Moon though, nevertheless, Luigi's Mansion is certainly getting another chance as well. So I mean, there's some good announcements. There may not have been announcements everybody wanted to hear or anything like that. I'm just not sure about how this one's going to play out for the fall. Whether or not this becomes a good year for Nintendo f for the fall 2018 or if it becomes a bad year compared to last year and so forth. I mean, I, it's, again, this is a good Direct, but I can't help but feel that this is basically feels like it's a, we're putting everything on Pokemon and Smash Brothers. We're putting all our eggs into that one basket to be exact. So, I mean, there were some good announcements. There were some I like, some that I'm uh, not 100% for sure. I'm not start sold on the Starlink yet, but we'll have to wait and see about that one. But overall, not bad. Not bad um, Nintendo Direct, though. Some good announcements, some announcements that didn't exactly click with me as much. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part six, our final part of this video, where I'll give you my thoughts on the... Mega Man 11 demo that came out. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part six, our final part of our Mind Truth Set video for this week. Big long one to be exact. And for this one, I wanna give you my thoughts on the Mega Man 11 demo that just that recently came out it's available to download on the nintendo switch i believe it's available to download on the ps4 and the xbox one for some reason they aren't bring they aren't having a demo for the pc slash steam version which honestly even though i'm not a pc gamer or anything like that i think it's just odd that they wouldn't do something like that i mean why not have folks who want a game on pc who want to play on a pc why not let them try it out to see how it plays on 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 the PC to be exact, and maybe get feedback on maybe making some changes to optimize it to make it run on the PC very well to be exact to be exact. So it's just weird that they don't have a demo for the PC version. 
anyway, um, I have played the game, have played the demo for a bit though. It's worth pointing out that the demo only has one boss, and that's Block Man at this time. And honestly, I could say for the mo for pretty much it plays like any other classic Mega Man, 2D Mega Man game that you know to love or hate to be exact. A couple of things I did do want to point out is that the game, at least based on the demo, it looks as though the game does have basically a difficulty mode. There's, I think, um, casual, I think there's easy, casual, and normal difficulty though, so you can basically basically, you know, which style fits you the best. Do you prefer to play like the old school classic uh, Mega Man game or do you want to or maybe you had a hard time with past Mega Man games and this sort of want to go a little bit easy and all that stuff so there's different 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 difficulties you could play another thing to point out is that the game offers um, basically a new feature called the gear system where basically you have two different types of gear one is that will slow down time making you making it easier to maybe either dodge enemies attacks or maybe make it easier to jump up to a platform if you have a hard time when you, when time is slowed down. Another one is basically you could charge up your um, power shots though or it makes your shots more powerful than I think the traditional power shots. And then the third one is basically a combination of both. Um, based on my time playing on the level, playing on Bachman's level, I found myself using the slow down time a bit more to make it easier to basically time some of the jumps or slow down like say there's you're escaping a certain like a blade that is basically you're on a walking platform and there's like a blade coming towards you like this and this and it's speeding up though by slowing down time though it makes it easier for you to sort of escape that blade it's like escape that situation though um, it also makes it easier to basically know where the enemy is landing like if the enemy is up in the air and it's going to slam down on you you could slow down time to sort of make it easier to get out of the way to be exact the catch with the gears however is the fact that every time you use them there's a little bar that fills up though if that bar fills up um, you won't be able to use the gear for a bit and you have to wait for it to cool down for a bit I I think it might be like maybe a minute or two for it to cool down to be exact though. Luckily you could turn it on or turn that gear on and off. So you could basically turn it on and then wait a little bit to cool down then turn it back and turn it off wait for it to cool back down then turn it back on. The only gear you cannot turn off is when you hit that hit the L and R button together that activates both the slowdown and your power shots on that one cannot be turned off you have to wait for it to sort of like cool down for a bit though um as far as taking on block man to be exact it plays like a traditional um traditional boss battle in the classic mega man levels but i did notice at some point though when you reduce your character's health though he basically turns into this big giant character you had to shoot him in the chest though and once that once he's not once he's knocked down that, his patterns kind of change a little bit where his health is sort of like at like barely like he's about to be defeated and so forth. So it kind of it looks like they kind of shaped it up the patterns a little bit, a little bit differently than from the classic uh, Mega Man games. It's still the same. It's, the concept is still the same, but it's a little bit different than than it was in the past Mega Man games. Uh, visually speaking, I like the two point. 5D art style they had to it though. It definitely has that anime look to it to be exact though. Uh, the voice acting, I mean, there's minor though. I don't, we'll have to find out what the original, what the final product is going to be like. Um, though, but the voice acting seems to be, see, it's all, it's all right. Despite Blockman having some cheesy moments or cheesy one-liners to be exact though. But overall, um, Basically, I, the best way I could sum up Mega Man 11 is that this is what Mighty Number no. 9 should have been. It should have been if KG Nifuni was focused heavily on making sure he got the game right rather than trying to build a media empire. I mean, the fact that we're seeing a Mega Man game after he left um, is just amazing. I mean, it, 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 
it's the fact that it's, it's been so long and many people thought Mega Man was dead and seeing him come back though is really really impressive and I so far I'm liking what I'm seeing though I'm hoping this game does sell well I really do because I think that if it does it can open the doors to not only uh, Mega Man X9 but it may although this is a long shot I will admit this is sort of a long shot to be exact it could open the door to the possibility that we could get, say, um, maybe they'll look at Mega Man Legends 3 to do that one. I mean, a lot of people are still burned about Capcom after what happened with that one. But if they could restore people's faith in Mega Man with the success of Mega Man I mean, 11, if that game is successful, though, I think it could open the door to revive maybe the Mega Man X series and maybe finally do a Mega Man Legends 3 that people would love to get their hands on though. Um, right now, um, again, the demo is available to download, but so far I will say I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. It is also worth pointing out though, unless I'm missing something, it doesn't seem to be any progress you made in the demo you can carry it over to the final game, unlike how it was in Shining Resource Reframe and Valkyrie Chronicles 4. So I don't think that's available in this demo though. But overall, I like what I'm seeing right now. It looks like it's the classic Mega Man gameplay with a bit of a twist though. And it's very interesting that this is the first Mega Man game without Keiji Inafune involvement in it whatsoever. So it's going to be really interesting how the game plays out when it finally launches, I believe, in October though. So. If you haven't tried the demo out, I would recommend you give it a shot, see if it's the kind of game that interests you. Again, it demo is available to download on the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One, and unfortunately, unless I'm missing something, PC doesn't have a demo version to download, so that's unfortunate for those who own PC to be exact. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinions. Um, what are yours? What are your thoughts about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, a remastered version of it coming not only to the Switch 2, but also to the PS4? Are you looking forward to this game coming to the Switch and the PS4? Is it something that interests you? Did you enjoy it when it originally came out on the GameCube back in 2004 or was it some, or were you not really interested in the game? And what about that announcement that it will be digital only in North America? Does that in any is that is that an issue for you? Will that prevent you from buying the game? Will it not prevent you from buying the game? And if somehow Japan or Europe gets a physical version, are you will you basically um Will you basically import it, you know, through PlayAsia to be exact, or will you basically still go ahead and download it, the North America version? What are your thoughts about the sales numbers for Spider-Man for PS4 in Japan and in the UK? Do you think these are a good number? you think this is very impressive that it's doing well in those regions? Do you have confidence that it will be number one when NPT releases um, their, sale, their numbers on the best-selling games for um, September, when I believe it will be, I believe they'll make the announcement in October. What are your thoughts about Nintendo's cloud save and the whole Nintendo online service for the Switch? Do you think people are overreacting? Do you think it's not as bad as a lot of people say it is, or do you think this is a train wreck just waiting to happen? Um, what are your thoughts about EA um, taking on Belgium regarding loot boxes, though? Um, do you think EA, do you think EA is going to find themselves in legal trouble? Do you think they gone too far? Or do you don't think this is going to have an impact on EA at all? Do you think the, do you think there's a chance we could see this go to court to be exact? And who, and if it does co go to court, who do you think has a better shot at winning? Do you think the Belgian government has a better shot at winning? Or do you think EA has a better shot at winning? Um, what are your thoughts on the Nintendo Direct that came out this week? Was this the Direct you were looking forward to seeing? Were there some announcements you liked? Were there some announcements you did not like? Um, were you, did it live up to your expectations? Or were you utterly disappointed with this Nintendo Direct? And finally, last but not least, the Mega Man 11 demo. Have you tried the demo out? And if so, 
What are your thoughts about it? Um, do you like what you saw? Did you not like what you saw through the demo? Um, and if you're planning on getting the game, which version do you are leaning towards? Are you leaning towards the PC, Xbox One, PS4, or the Nintendo Switch? Um, do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Excuse me. As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I and hit that like button if you liked the video. I hope you do. I would really appreciate it. And I hope you hit that subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit that bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!